Merry Christmas! And I hope you're ready for a thrill a minute. <laughs> Is everybody ready to paint? Well, you shouldn't be. Not right now, because we got some things to work out before you get started. And that's the purpose of this video. If you watch the video, you'll see what you're getting yourselves into, and it'll be a lot more fun when you actually sit down to do the painting, which I hope that we will do when we have our painting day together, like we did the cookie decorating last year. We're going to do a painting party this year. So hopefully uh, you won't get too bored with the video, and you'll be able to watch it so you know what's going to happen. Alrighty. So, uh, this is basically just an introduction, and we've got family watching, and probably going to be a few friends watching. Uh, I'm going to send the link on YouTube out to anybody who wants to watch it, but primarily this is for my family, because I love them, and uh, we're going to have a good time, I hope. So, we're getting ready to start filming now. Phil is my cameraman and uh, he's been doing this a long time so I think we're gonna hopefully turn out with a pretty good uh, video but pretty soon I'll be saying grab your brushes here we go all right see you in a few minutes all righty we're back and we are getting ready to go over what came in the box of goodies. Uh, you're going to see that there is assorted ribbon and twine. There's assorted ornaments. Now, thing you'll notice about these ornaments, they seem to be two different colors. That's because they're two different types of clay. The white ones are the porcelain ornaments and the kind of flesh colored tan ones, uh, off white ones, those are the raku clay ornaments. They're pretty fragile, so uh, when we get to different stages with the ornaments, you don't want to be dropping them because if you do, this could happen. Oops, and that's a tragedy. But we'll get back to this later. Um, it's got two different styles of painting on it. I'm going to show you both ways. Alrighty, so we have our ornaments here. Now they're all individually wrapped in a little brown box inside the box. Everybody should have gotten a set of assorted paint brushes as well as a smaller bag of paint brushes which are stencil brushes, but we will be referring to them as dry brushes. Now, it's very important to know that when you have the dry brushes, you do not put them into the water. They have to remain dry. The only thing they'll go into is full strength paint and just barely and I'll show you that technique as we get closer to that type of painting. But these are what those look like. These are your dry brushes. And the other brushes are all mixed up, all different kinds, just kind of like these. Okay, now this. This is your bead reamer set. Okay. Um, the important thing about these bead reamers is that if you'll notice in a hole that maybe it's clogged up or maybe after you paint it, you get clogged with paint. What you do is the first and foremost important thing, you get a pair of safety glasses. You can use this kind. You can use uh, goggles like if you were going swimming. These are a little bit more styling, and it comes and wraps around your eyes to the side as well as in the front. So you've got to make sure that you put on the safety goggles because what's going to happen, let me take my glasses off. When you go to ream out a bead hole, 
this, uh, it's like a file and you want to stick it in the hole gently, but firmly, and you just kind of rotate it. And what that does is it gets the junk out of the hole and makes it a little smoother around the edges. This is gonna be important when you go to put your ribbon in your ornaments, you'll wanna be able to get the twine or the ribbon into the hole. Put the bead reamers away. There's also a rasp if you have flat areas that need to be filed down. That's what that's for. And these two bead reamers on the end, those are for larger holes. Same purpose as this, uh, but you have to be careful. You don't just force it in there. You work it gently and firmly. Okay, I also sent spray bottles. There should be one for everybody in the box. And for Jennifer, because I wasn't sure which uh, spray bottle would, would feel better in her hands, I also got a larger spray bottle that came in Jennifer's box. Now I also sent you an eight ounce bottle of glitter paint. Now it looks white, but when it's painted on and it dries, it dries clear and it gives a really beautiful glitter effect as a final step in your painting. It's super fine glitter, just, just magical. Now I also sent you metallic paint. This is rose gold metallic paint. And there's another bottle, uh, I believe it's called Glorious Gold metallic paint that uh, is, is nice for adding details and sometimes doing some dry brushing with. Now you'll see me use this gold because I didn't order enough of the other, or they were out of it or something, but I couldn't find any more of the stuff that I got y'all. And that's pretty good uh, gold paint. Now you'll notice there's a lot of paint in the box. There's all kinds of assorted colors. And the other thing I sent you was a palette or a paint tray. This is so that you can put your paint, you can mix colors if you want, but this is what you'll be using for the painting. Alrighty, so that's basically what was in the box. Okay, now you're gonna need some extra supplies. For starters, very important, safety glasses. Can't stress that enough. I think I told you in a, a message about the little girl that came to our shop that was uh, painting with her ceramics and she didn't have safety glasses on and a piece of the ceramic busted off and embedded in her eyeball and we had to take her to the emergency room. So safety glasses, very, very, very important. Another thing that you'll want to have is a pair of scissors. Okay, you want to get the cheap paper plates. Those are these. Do not get the kind that have the fancy print and design on them because they have a coated finish that doesn't allow liquids and all that grease and everything to, to soak through. Well, we need the cheap paper plates because we actually need these paper plates to absorb some of the extra moisture that's in the paint when we go to dry brush. So cheap paper plates, everybody. You'll need paper towels. Everybody's got paper towels, I think. And you'll need a water jar. And of course you'll need water for the water jar. Toothpicks, always handy. Poking paint through a hole maybe if you're trying to clean it out or stirring and mixing paint in your palette when you don't wanna get your brush dirty. Toothpicks. You're gonna want some old newspaper to lay down on your work surface. A hair dryer is a good idea because if you want to speed up the process of the drying time with your ornaments, say you wanna get onto the next step like painting on the glitter and the ornament's not quite dry yet, well, you can take a hair dryer and just uh, blow it till it's dry. It doesn't take very long at all, just a minute or two. And then you want a paintbrush cup or a can or another jar which will hold your paintbrushes. Now keep your dry brush brushes separate and then 
here. You can use anything. This was one I made a long time ago. So just anything to hold your paintbrushes in front of you and everything. Okay, those are the extra supplies. Now the next stage is going to be preparation. This could take a little while. You will notice this is the brand of paint that I got for y'all, the Apple Barrel, for most of them. Uh, the gold paint was by Deco Art. But you'll notice that there is plastic wrap on these paint bottles. And if you open it up, you'll notice, oh, that one didn't have one. Usually, there is another seal inside. Hopefully yours were sealed because if they weren't, I hope they didn't come open in the, in the process. Okay, so you're going to remove all your paint seals on your, your bottles of paint. You're going to shake that paint well. Make sure you have your finger on the top so that it doesn't fly open. Make sure your lid's on tight and shake the heck out of it. Shake, 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 shake. And you want to get it nice and shook up and mixed up, especially with it traveling in inclement weather and cold weather and hot weather and all that. You just want to make sure your paint's good and mixed. Okay. Then you want to take your spray bottles and fill them with water. You want to fill your water jars. First, lay down the newspaper. And then give everybody five paper plates to start. They're going to go through a lot of paper plates if they're doing it right. Okay. Put on some Christmas music. That would be good. Now, Mom's in charge of dispersing the paint. What she needs to do is... Here's your palette. When you squeeze it in, you just want to put in about a dime's worth. You don't want to fill up the whole circle, okay? Just put just that much in there because it's easy to get exuberant and squirt out more than you wanted to. The other thing we're going to do, some light paint. And like I said, just about a dime's worth. You can also mix your own pink when it comes to doing your painting. So obviously, I'm going to do some painting today to start with in the pink section. You're probably thinking, well, that's not very Christmassy. Well, that's okay. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. Once you get started, you might start getting a little antsy unless you're having so much fun with the painting that make sure you take time for a cookie and cocoa break. Okay, another big uh, important thing is that when you are using your regular paint brushes and you're just applying the paint on your uh, ornaments and everything, um, you want to make sure that you put your paint brushes when you're done with them. This is the regular paint brushes, not the dry brushes. You want to immediately put them into the water when you're done because you can always rinse it out, rinse the other paint color out, and you can use a paper towel to dry that brush enough to where you can dip it into a fresh color of paint. Okay, the reason is acrylic paint, which is what you'll be using, this is all acrylic paint, it dries pretty fast. And if it dries on your brushes and it's all goopy with paint and it gets dry, it's going to ruin your paintbrush. You'll just have to throw that paintbrush away. It won't be any good anymore. Until you're ready to clean up at the end of the night, your regular paintbrushes always have to go back in the water when you're done using them. Now it's time for unwrapping the ornaments. Be very careful. Uh, most of the ornaments are wrapped individually, but uh, there are a few of the smaller ones that I put in two and three ornaments in a wrap. So just be real careful so that you don't have ornaments flying out all over the place. Okay. That's it for preparation. Opening up all those paint jars is probably going to be the most time consuming. And then 
opening the ornaments and unwrapping the ornaments is probably going to be the second most time consuming. But if you get all that stuff done ahead of time, when it's time to go sit down and paint, it'll be really good. Okay, we've already talked about the rules of if you're finished with the paint color, put the brush in the water. Okay, do not put the dry brushes in the water or watered down paint. Now, watered down paint is uh, for a technique that I'm going to show you that I call, I like to call tie dye painting because what it does is it creates the illusion of tie dye on either the snowman's sweater or the fish. So he looks like a real, well, not necessarily a real fish, but a very interesting fish. But those are some of the ornaments that you might want to do the tie-dye technique. Okay. And again, cannot stress it enough. Safety glasses. Must have safety glasses when you're reaming out the holes with the bead reamers. Okay. Want to keep everybody's eyes safe. 